ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار to begin after the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thanking Allah as a wajal for his many bounties and favors upon us all i want to extend my gratitude to my noble brother and colleague and friend abu abdul salam of salafi inc for establishing these lectures for the benefit of the people and calling the people to Islam for this is what we were advised with by the noble sheikh rabia ibn hadi al madkhali hafizahullah ta'ala doing our umrah trip this year when Allah favored us to be able to visit the sheikh in his home and he advised us and encouraged us of teaching the people and working hard and spreading the da'wah to the people and calling the people to the correct understanding of Islam and he advised us with clarifying the misconceptions and the doubts that Islam has been covered with from the direction of the misguided deviant Muslims and other than them and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to preserve the likes of our Sheikh Rabia ibn Hadi al-Masri and the rest of the ulama of Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah for indeed they are the true and her- the true inheritors of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned al ulama warathatul anbiya that the scholars are the inheritors of the prophets and the scholars of ahl sunnah wal jamaah they are the true inheritors of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they pass on the inheritance to the students of knowledge and to the masses of the muslims 
fulfilling their duties and responsibilities as being the scholars of this ummah. So may Allah Azza wa Jal preserve them all from those who are alive. And may Allah have mercy upon the ulama who have passed away and give them a high place in the paradise. We begin with the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمُ وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned Indeed, this Qur'an, it guides to that which is more upright and more just. And it gives glad tidings to the believers those who do righteous deeds, that for them is a magnificent, tremendous reward. Allah Azza wa Jal describes his book, describes his words as being that which guides to that which is more upright and more just and more better for mankind to follow and to take as a means of guidance. And also, those who do so, and they believe in the Book of Allah, as the Wajal, and in all of that which it entails, and they believe in the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and all of that which his sunnah entails. The Qur'an gives the believers the glad tidings. Those who do righteous deeds, that for them is a magnificent, tremendous reward. The Book of Allah is guidance and a light by which the people guide themselves with. Those who contemplate over Allah's words and ponder over Allah's words and seek to follow Allah's words, these people will be guided by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentioned about His Qur'an, قُلْ هُوَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا هُدًا وَشِفَاء Say it is for those who believe a means of guidance and a cure. The Qur'an is the guidance for all mankind. For Allah Azza wa Jal sent his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to call all of mankind to this deed. So the Quran as well as the Sunnah is a guidance for all of mankind. But those who believe in it, those who take it as their way of life, these are the ones who benefit from that guidance. These are the ones whom Allah Azza wa Jal has given them the success to follow the guidance. Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned, Kitabun anjalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadakkara ulul albab. A book which we have revealed to you, which is blessed, or a blessed book which we have revealed to you, in order that they may ponder over its verses, and in order that they may reflect, or those of understanding may reflect. Allah Azza wa Jal describes his book as being blessed, and that he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, sent down his book to his beloved prophet and messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in order that the people may ponder over the Qur'an and in order that those of understanding may reflect and take lessons. Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقَبَّالُهَا Do they not ponder over the Qur'an or are there locks upon their hearts? not pondering over the Qur'an and seeking understanding of the Qur'an 
is a sign that there are locks upon the hearts of those who do not care to reflect over Allah's book and seek to understand Allah's book. So it is befitting for the believer that they recite the Quran and ponder and seek understanding of the Quran in abundance. Not just in the month of Ramadan, but in the month of Ramadan and outside of the month of Ramadan. Because the believer is in need of guidance throughout the entire year and every month and every week and every day and every moment of one's life. The believer is in need of guidance. And this is the benefit. And Allah Azza wa Jal commanding us with the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha in our salawat and every raka'ah. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, لا صلاة لمن لم يقرأ بفاتحة الكتاب that there is no prayer for the one who does not recite the opening chapter of the book. And what is within the opening chapter of the book? The statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to the straight path. At least 17 times a day, we are asking Allah Azza wa Jal, to be guided to the straight path. And the guidance that we are asking Allah for is the guidance of success, the guidance of direction, the guidance of sabbat, establishment. We want to know the correct direction. We want to be given the success to follow the correct direction and tread upon the path of co correct direction and likewise we want the success to be established upon the path of correct direction until our death implementing the statement of Allah and the commandment of Allah وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ and do not die unless you are Muslim Allah Azza wa Jal, He stated, وَنَزَّمْنَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ And we have sent down upon you the book, clarifying all matters, and a guidance and a mercy and a glad tidings for the Muslims. Allah Azza wa Jal once again mentioned that He has sent down upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Qur'an. And he mentions another virtue of the Qur'an. That the Qur'an is that which gives clarity for all things. Meaning all things that mankind is in need of to live their lives in a manner that is befitting and pleasing to Allah, to worship Allah Azza wa Jal correctly, clarifying all matters that mankind is in need of in order for them to believe correctly and behave correctly. This is the meaning of the Quran clarifying all matters, meaning all matters that mankind is in need of. from the aspect of the religion and from the aspects of the dunya. The Qur'an is a clarification for these affairs. And it is a guidance. And it is a rahmah. It is a, it's huda and it is rahmah. It is guidance and it is mercy. And glad tidings for the believers. This statement of Allah in describing his speech his book, the Qur'an, the last revelation to mankind. 
as being guidance, as being the mercy and glad tidings for those who are Muslims, those who submit. Here, Barakallahu Fikum, is something that we need to reflect upon. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing his book in this manner. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu an he mentioned qad bayyana lana fi hadha al-Qur'an kulla ilm wa kulla shay. Abdullah bin Mas'ud he mentioned that Allah has clarified for us in this Quran every knowledge and everything. Mujahid he mentioned kullu hala wa kullu haram. Mujahid he mentions that Allah has clarified every matter that is halal and every matter that is haram. Al Hafid ibn Kathir. رحمه الله تعالى يسد وقول ابن مسعود عام وأشمل and the statement of ابن مسعود is more general and more inclusive then he goes on to say رحمه الله فإن القرآن اشتمل على كل علم نافع من خبر ما سبق وعلم ما سيأتي وكل حلال وحرام وما الناس إليه محتاجون في أمر دنياهم ودينهم ومعاشهم ومعادهم الحافظ ابن كثير رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned that indeed the Quran comprises of every beneficial knowledge it entails every beneficial knowledge from the knowledge of that which has passed or preceded, meaning like from the knowledge of the previous scriptures. The beneficial knowledge from the previous scriptures, the Quran entails that. And it entails the knowledge of that which is to come. It entails the knowledge of all of that which is halal and all of that which is haram. It entails the knowledge of that which mankind is in need of in the affairs of their worldly matters as well as their religious matters. It entails the knowledge of that which they are in need of regarding living in the life of this dunya and their final destination in the hereafter. Wahuda Ailil Kulub. It is a guidance for the heart, as Al Hafiz ibn Kathir he states, Wa Rahmatan wa Bushra lil Muslimin. And it is a mercy and a glad tidings for the Muslims. The Quran is a mercy. From the aspect of you have in the Quran the knowledge which protects the person from punishments in this world and punishments in the hereafter, if the people were to adhere to it. It is a mercy from the aspect that the Quran teaches us how to deal with one another how mankind is to behave with one another. The Quran clarifies the rights, duties, and responsibilities that we have over one another and that are upon us in relation to one another. All of this is a mercy. All of this is a rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This shows, barakallah fikum jami'an, that we are in constant need of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who strive to learn Allah's book, to implement Allah's book in their lives, 
and to convey it and teach it to others, these are the best of the people. As we have in the narration of Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu an, that he stated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ That the best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it. Al-Imam al-Sheikh al-Allama Abdul Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala one of the imma of Ahl sunnah of our time he stated فَخِيَارُ nas wa وَأَفَاضِلُ nas هُمْ أَهْلُ الْقُرْآنِ الَّذِينَ يُعَلِّمُونَهُ وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَهُ وَيَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ وَيَدْعُونَ إِلَيْهِ He said that the best of the people and the most virtuous of the people, they are the people of the Qur'an, those who teach it and learn it, and they act in accordance to it and they call to it. وَتَظْهَرْ عَلَيْهِمْ أَثَارُ تِلَاوَتِهِ وَالْعَمَلُ بِهِ And the traces of its recitation and acting in accordance to it is apparent upon these people. هُمْ أَهْلُ الْقُرْآنِ They are the people of the Qur'an. So here the Shaykh mentioned وَتَظْهَرْ عَلَيْهِمْ آثار تلاوته والعمل به هم أهل القرآن هم خيار الناس وهم صفوة الأمة لكونه يدعو من قرأه وتدبره ويدعوه إلى الاستقامة والتخلق بالأخلاق الفاضلة والحذر مما يغضب الله so the Sheikh mentions that the traces of its, reci- its recitation and acting in accordance to it is apparent upon these people. They are the people of the Qur'an. They are the best of mankind. These individuals are like the cream of the crop when it comes to this Ummah. Because it calls the one who reads it and ponders over it it calls them to being upon istikama, upon uprightness in the religion. وَتَخَلُّقْ بِالْأَخْلَاقِ الْفَاضِلَةِ And to have beautiful, virtuous mannerisms. And the Qur'an, it warns against that which angers Allah. It warns against that which angers Allah. And that's the end of the speech of the noble Imam, Sheikh. Abdul Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala. Ponder over these words, my noble brothers and sisters in al-Islam. How the noble Imam and the Sheikh gave explanation to the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the best of you are those who learn the Quran and then teach it. Because when a person learns the Qur'an, this means that the person is implementing the Qur'an. Because learning the Qur'an is not just memorizing surah and ayat. The true meaning of learning the Qur'an is along with the, along with the memorization of it is the implementation. And along with the memorization and implementation is calling the people to that matter. And one's character is going to be that of the Quran as Aisha radiallahu anha Lemma Suilat an Khuluk in Nabi Sarallahu Alehi was Salam Kala Tana Kulukuhu al Quran. When our mother Aisha radiallahu anha 
when she was questioned about the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she said his character was that of the Quran. Meaning, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a live representation and implementation of Allah's speech. He practiced it, he implemented it, he displayed it, he demonstrated it. And a beautiful point has been made about this narration or statement of our beloved mother Aisha radiallahu anha concerning the Prophet's character being that of the Quran. The Alama, Sheikh Rabir Hafidhullah Ta'ala, has warned the people against the statement that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the Qur'an walking. That this is a major mistake in the matter of Aqidah, as the Qur'an is Kalamullah, is the speech of Allah. So we do not say the Prophet is Allah's speech walking, as if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the physical embodiment of Allah's words, which would mean that he has with him divinity, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather, she stated his character was that of the Qur'an. And not that he himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the Qur'an walking. We come to the statement of Allah azza wa jal in Surah Al-Nahl, verse number 90, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْرِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَى عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْيِ يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned, Indeed Allah commands with justice and goodness and given the rights to those of one's kinship. And he prohibits that which is indecent and that which is evil and that which is transgression of the boundaries. And Allah, he admonishes you He gives you this admonishment in order that you may reflect. This verse here, Barakallahu Fikum, in Surah Al-Nahl, verse number 90, one finds that everything that one is commanded with is present in this verse, and everything that one is prohibited from is present in this verse. The noble Imam the Sheikh Muhammad ibn Saleh al-Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, he comments by mentioning rahimahullah, al-amr bil-adl wajib, wal-amr bil-ihsan sunnah. He says the command of justice is that which is obligatory, and the command with that which is good is that which is the sunnah. And as for the statement, وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى هَذِهِ السِّرَةِ يعني إعطاء القريب حقا And given the one who is of your kinship, he said this is the keeping of the ties, meaning giving one's relative his right. And as for the statement, وَيَنْهَا عَنَ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِي الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ بِمَا يَتَعَلَّقْ يَتَعَلَّقْ بِحَقِّ اللَّهِ وَالْبَغِي بِمَا يَتَعَلَّقْ بِحَقِّ الْمَخْلُوقِ وَهُوَ الْعُدْوَانَ عَلَى الْخَلْقِ وَهُوَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يَنْهَى عَنْ هَذَا وَهَذَا لِنَوْبُ إِمَامٍ الشَّيْخِ مُحَمِّدٍ بِنْ صَالِحٍ الْعُثَيْنِينَ وَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَمِنْشِنْ as for the statement of Allah, and he prohibits that which is indecency and evil in the transgression of the boundaries, meaning that which is indecent and evil 
regarding what is connected to the right of Allah. And the transgression of the boundaries regarding that which is connected to the right of creation. And it is transgression against the creation. So Allah, the most glorified, the most high, the one who was free from all imperfection, he prohibits from this matter, meaning evil and indecency regarding his right, and he also prohibits from the matter of the transgression of the boundaries against creation. This is an important matter here. As al hafiz or as a shir, Abdurrahman ibn Nasr al-Fi'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, he made a beautiful point regarding this verse. He said, for the Abdul Aladi Amar Allah who be he, Yeshman Ad Abdul Fi Haki with Fi Haki Ibadi. For the Abdul Fizanik Adaul Huku Kaminat Moafiratin. Be an you edia Al Abna Aujab Allah who Alehi min Al Huku and Malia Wal Badania. And he mentioned, and you know, he goes on to say, وَيُعَامِلُ الْخَلْقِ بِالْعَدْلِ أَتَّابِ فَيُؤَدِّ كُلَّ وَالًا مَا عَلَيْهِ تَحْتَ وِلَايَتِهِ He goes on to mention, or he states, the justice which Allah has commanded with is the justice regarding his rights and the rights of his servants. And the justice in that is that the person fulfills the right in a complete, correct manner. That the person fulfills the rights of Allah and fulfills the rights of creation in a complete, correct manner. And that is that the servant fulfills that which Allah has obligated upon him from the monetary rights and from the physical rights and duties and responsibilities. And then he goes on to mention and that he behaves and deals with the creation in a complete just manner. So everyone who is in charge of a matter, then he fulfills the rights of those who are under his guardianship. To the end of the speech. He goes on to mention that He says the justice is that which Allah has obligated upon them in his book and upon the tongue of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that which he has commanded with them to traverse upon. The Shaykh Abdurrahman ibn Nasr al-Sa'di, rahimahullah, he also commented on this verse with his statement, فَلَمْ يَبْقَ عَدْرٌ وَلَا إِحْسَانٌ وَلَا سِرَةٌ إِلَّا أَمْرَ بِهِ فِي هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ الْكَرِيبَةِ وَلَا فَحْشَاءٌ وَمُنْكَرٌ مُتَعَلَّقٌ بِحُقُوقِ اللَّهِ وَلَا بَغْفٍ عَلَى الْقَلْبِ فِي دِمَائِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَعْرَاضِهِمْ إِلَّا نَهَى عَنْهُ وَوَعَظَ عِبَادَهُ أَنْ يَتَذَكَّرُوا مَا فِي هَذِهِ الْأَوَامِرِ وَحُسْنِهَا وَنَفْعِهَا فَيَمْتَثِلُوهَا وَيَتَذَكَّرُوا مَا فِي النَّوَاهِ مِنَ الشَّرْ وَالضَّرَرْ فَيَجْتَنِبُوهَا Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al-Sa'di رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned that there does not remain any matter of justice or any matter of goodness nor keeping of the ties 
except that Allah has commanded with it in this in this verse or this noble verse here. There is no indecency. There is no evil that is connected with the rights of Allah. And there is no transgression of the boundaries against the creation regarding their blood and their wealth and their honor, except that Allah has prohibited from this prohibited this matter and Allah has admonished his servants and exhorted them to reflect over that which is in these commandments from its goodness and its benefits in order that they implement it and that they reflect over these prohibitions and that which it entails of evil and harm in order that they stay away from it. This is the beauty of the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how the Qur'an is suitable for all time because how Allah Azawajal has worded his speech this is applicable in all times, in all places with all peoples no one can come and say that the Qur'an is not suitable for these times when Allah Azawajal has worded his wording in a way that no matter what comes about of technology, of advancement of the society, no matter what comes about from the new worldly affairs that were not present in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way that Allah Azza wa Jal has worded his speech, it is still applicable to those situations. And those who say from the Muslims that the Quran is not applicable in these days and times because we're living in modern civilization, then know that this is a statement of apostasy. As Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentions, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. That today I have completed for you your religion, and I have perfected my favor upon you, and I am pleased for you Islam as a religion and way of life. This is for every Muslim. No matter what geographic location. No matter what tribal background, no matter what time or era that they are living in, Allah Azza wa Jal has completed and perfected Islam for all of the Muslims. From the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam up until the end of time. Allah Azza wa Jal commands with justice and goodness regarding his rights first and foremost and the rights of his servants. What is the greatest right of Allah? Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Mu'adh Atadri ma haqqu Allahi ala al-ibad wa ma haqqu al-ibad ala Allah Qala Mu'adh Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam Faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam حق الله على العباد أن يعبدوه ولا يشركوا به شيئا وحق العباد على الله أن لا يعذب من لم يشرك به شيئا وكما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal O Mu'adh Do you know the right or the right of Allah over his servants and the rights of the servants over Allah. Mu'adh, he said, Allah and his messenger knows best. And this was the correct statement for one to say when one doesn't know in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one is to say Allah knows best. 
as the ulama have explained. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to mention that the right of Allah over his servant is that they worship him alone and they do not associate any partners with him and the rights of the servants over Allah is that Allah does not punish the one who does not associate partners with him. This is the greatest right from the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we worship him alone. And this right is not just a right that is upon the Muslims, but rather it is a right of Allah over creation. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the first commandment directed towards mankind in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal nas, u'budu rabbakum al-lazhi khalafakum wal-lazina min qabidikum na'allakum tattakun. O mankind, worship your Lord, the one who has created you and created those before you in order that you may attain piety. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'adh ibn Jabal to Yemen, he said, إِنَّكَ تَأْتِي قَوْمَ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلُ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَارَةَ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ إلى آخر الحديث أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet sallallahu he said to Mu'ad, indeed you are going to the people of the book so that the first matter that you call them to be to testify that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. To the end of the narration. قال الله عز وجل وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. And I have not created the jinn nor mankind except to worship. So the greatest right that Allah has over mankind, as well as the jinn, is His right to be worshipped alone. Being that Allah is the one who has created us alone, He is to be worshipped alone. Being that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who provides for us alone, he is to be worshipped alone. Being that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who arranges the affairs of the universe alone, he is to be worshipped alone. Being that Allah alone controls life and death, then he alone is to be worshipped. And other than that, from the matters of his lordship, which necessitate that he is to be worshipped alone. This is the greatest matter of justice. As the greatest oppression is to worship other than Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned that Luqman said to his son, Ya Bunayya, la tushrik billah, inna shirka la dhummun azim. O my son, my beloved son, do not associate partners with Allah. Indeed, the association of partners with Allah is the greatest oppression. This is the greatest crime that a person can do. To worship other than Allah, when it is Allah alone who has created you, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, when he mentioned, "Shall I not inform you of the greatest of the sin?" He said, "An taja lillahi nidan wuhu khalaqak, wuhu khalaqak." That the greatest sin and crime is that you make an equal for Allah when it is Allah alone who created you. After the rights of Allah, you have the rights of the servants. And the greatest right that a servant has over the others is the right of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over mankind. That he is to be followed and obeyed. He is to be believed in. His commandments are to be adhered to. Because 
believing in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, following his commandments, living one's life in accordance to his sunnah, this is connected to the rights of Allah. From the aspect that one will not be able to worship Allah as it were jail properly except by way of following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions لا يسمع في من هذه الأمة يهودي ولا نصراني ثم مات ولم يؤمن بالذي جدت به إلا دخل النار أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم There is no one from this nation that hears about me whether it is a Jew or Christian and then he dies not believing in that which I have come with except that he will enter into the hellfire. This shows that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has a great, tremendous right over mankind, over this Ummah. And the Ummah he was speaking about is Ummah Da'wah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Kullu Ummati yadkhuduna al-jannah illa man aba. Qalu wa man ya'ba ya Rasulullah. قَالَ مَنْ أَطَعَنِي دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ أَصَارِي فَقَدْ أَبَى The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, All of my nation will enter into the paradise except for those who refuse. The Sahaba, they said, O Messenger of Allah, who will refuse? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, Whoever obeys me enters into the paradise, and whoever disobeys me has refused. After that, we have the rights of our relatives, from our parents, and then those who are nearest to us in relation. It is upon us to keep the ties of kinship. For whoever breaks the ties of kinship or cuts off the tie of kinship, Allah will cut off the tie with them, as mentioned in the authentic narration. And often we find in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah, after the right of Allah being mentioned, the rights of the parents are mentioned. We find, Barakallahu Fikum, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أُعْبُضُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and do not associate any partners with Him and treat the parents with righteousness. In Surah Luqman, after Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that which Luqman mentioned to his son, Allah says, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا To the end of the ayah. And we have commanded mankind to be dutiful to their parents. One's mother has carried them in a state of weakness upon weakness to the end of the verse. We have in the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud when he said to the Messenger of Allah, Ayyul Amali Ahabu in Allah, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as salatu ala waqtiha. Qala Abdullah bin Mas'ud, thumma ay, qala bir walidayn. قال عبد الله بن مسعود ثم أي قال الجهاد في سبيل الله عبد الله بن مسعود he asked the messenger of Allah which actions are most beloved to Allah and the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said prayer at the proper time and some of the ulama they have mentioned that what is meant by this means prayer at the beginning time or at its earliest time. Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, and then when O Messenger of Allah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, treating the parents with righteousness and goodness. And this is the point. The rights of the parents being mentioned after the rights of Allah. And then he said, and then what O Messenger of Allah, he said, striving for the sake of Allah. So it is a must that we Treat our kinsfolk with goodness, starting with the parents. 
And this includes treating our relatives with goodness from our wives and our husbands and our children and our aunts and our uncles. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي That the best of you is the one to, who is best to his family and I am the best of you being I am the best to my family. And there are many other proofs and evidences that can be mentioned that shows the importance of keeping the ties of kinship and how the ties of kinship are to be kept and the rewards of keeping the ties of kinship and the punishments for cutting off the ties of kinship. And one can refer back to that which has been offered by the ulama and collected by the ulama past and present from the ayat and the ahadith and the explanations of the ayat and the ahadith concerning this topic. Allah Azza wa Jal has forbidden indecency and he has forbidden evil and he has forbidden the transgression of the boundaries. So the statement of Allah وَيَنْهَا عَنَ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ al Hafiz ibn Kathir, he states الفواحش المحرمات والمنكرات ما ظهر منها من فاعلها الحافظ ابن كثير he said that the indecency is that which is prohibited and the evil is that which is apparent from the prohibited matters which the person does And then he mentions the statement of Allah, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ Say, indeed, my Lord has only prohibited the indecency, that which is apparent from it and that which is hidden. The noble Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasr al-Sa'di, rahimahu Allah, he says, regarding the statement of Allah, وَيَنْهَا عَلَى الْفَحْشَى هُوَ كُلُّ الذَّنْبٍ عَظِيمٍ There is no child that is born except that the child is born upon the natural disposition. And then it is the two parents that turn the child into a Jew or turn the child into a Christian or turn the child into a Magian. And in another narration, or turn the child into a polytheist. 
So this shows that when the person is going against the legislation of Allah, the fitrah has been corrupted. But when a person's fitrah is in compliance to the legislation of Allah, then the fitrah is salima. The fitrah is sound. So the Sheikh had mentioned all of that which is declared to be indecent or deemed to be indecent by the legislation of Allah, meaning by way of the Quran and by way of the Sunnah. This is how we declare what's indecent and what's not indecent. We do not go in accordance into Western thinking or the thinking of democracy or communism, or any other ideology that has come about to declare what's indecent and what's not indecent. We are Muslims. We believe in Allah. We believe in His Messenger. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. And Allah, He knows that you don't know. So we must View whatever Allah has Allah has declared to be indecent to be indecent, and whatever Allah has declared to be evil, we declare it to be evil. And whatever Allah has declared to be indecent and evil by way of His Messenger, we declare it to be indecent and evil. And we do not fear the blame of the blamers in this regard. The Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al Sa'di, rahimahullah Taala, he mentioned. Some examples of indecency, shirk billah, again, associating partners with Allah is the greatest oppression, it's the greatest crime. Killing people without right, this is something that is evil. And any Muslim that agrees to what is going on and being committed of the crimes and atrocities by the likes of ISIS or Daesh and Al-Qaeda, and other than these terroristic groups, any Muslim who agrees with this and condones this type of behavior is condoning that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared to be indecent and evil in the religion. Because it's killing people without right. A zina, illegal sexual intercourse, whether it is adultery or fornication, this is something that is evil and indecent. Stealing, this is something that is evil and indecent. Being amazed with oneself, having pride, looking down upon the people. These are acts of evil and indecency. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, وَثَلَاثٌ مُهْلِكَاتٌ شُحٌ مُطَعَةٌ وَهَوَى مُطَّبَعٌ وَإِعْجَابُ الْمُرْئِ بِنَفْسِي The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said three things destroy a person. Miserliness that is obeyed, desires that are followed, and a person's self-admiration, the person being amazed with himself. The Prophet وسلم, said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ضربة من الكبر قال الرجل فقال رجل يا رسول الله إن الرجل يحب ثوبه أن يكون حسنا ونعله حسنا فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله جميل ويحب الجمال. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever has the smallest amount of pride in his heart من لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من الكبر whoever has the smallest amount of pride in his heart will not enter into the paradise. So a man, he said, O Messenger of Allah, indeed the person he loves for his garment and his footwear to look nice. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِنَّ الْكِبْرِ بَطْرُ الْحَقْ وَغَمْتُ النَّاسِ Indeed, pride is the rejection of the truth and looking down upon the people. So when we find that the truth has been presented to the people regarding any matter. And the people, they reject this truth. And they bring up all type of false interpretations 
to reject this truth? This is from kibble. This is from pride. And this is from the indecency or matters that have been declared to be indecent by the way of the legislation and by way of the sound natural disposition. We warn the brothers and sisters against this. When the truth comes to you, accept it. When the truth comes to you, accept it. Don't make up excuses. Don't bring false interpretations. Don't try to look for the slightest thing to grab onto to reject the truth. Accept the truth. Because rejecting the truth is pride and arrogance. And arrogance is from the affairs of indecency. Sheikh Abdurrahman ibn Asad al Sadi. He said, and that which enters into that which is evil, or before that the Prophet Sallallahu said, rejecting the truth and looking down upon the people. Don't look down upon the people as if you are better than them. <laughs> Indeed, the best of you and most honorable of you with Allah, those who have the most piety and the most taqwa. <laughs> and don't praise yourselves. Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir al Sa'di said, and that which enters into the matter of evil, every sin and disobedience that is connected to the right of Allah. And transgression of the boundaries is every act of transgression against the creation regarding the blood, property, and the honor. All Muslims, be aware of violating the blood and the property and the honor of creation in general. That means Muslims and non-Muslims alike, but especially the Muslim. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, كُلُّ الْمُسْلِمِ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ حَرَامِ دَمُهُ وَمَالُهُ عِرْضُهُ That every Muslim is sacred to another Muslim. His blood, his property, and his honor. It is not right for the Muslims to violate the blood, property, and the honor of other Muslims. But unfortunately, we find in these days and times, Muslims violating the blood, the property, and the honor of other Muslims. Look at the Khawarij who are killing Muslims. And we find the Khawarij killing more Muslims than we find the non-Muslims killing Muslims. The Khawarij killing Muslims in the city of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is sacred land. This is transgression of the boundaries. We find the Khawarij killing Muslims in the lands of the Muslims with these explosions. We find the Khawarij killing Muslims when they are attempting to overthrow the Muslim government. This is from the transgression of the boundary that Allah has not given the authority for. We find the Khawarij violating the property of the Muslims. And other than the Khawarij violating the property of the Muslims, when you hear of the cases of the Muslims swooping Muslims out of their money. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من غشنا فليس منا whoever deceives us is not from us and let's not even mention the honor and what's even worse بارك الله فيكم when you have people of أهل السنة violating the honor of their brothers and sisters from أهل السنة how evil is this in general, the Muslim blood, property, and honor is sacred. But how much more so for a person who's from the people of the Sunnah, not a person of, of innovation, not a person of sin. And you speak about this individual's honor. <clears throat> and you attack this individual's honor. And you treat the individual as if he is an innovator. Warning against the person without right. Or warning against the person after the person has made toba from his sin or rectified his affairs. People still warning against the person. This is inappropriate. This is transgression of the boundaries. 
how much more so when you find the Mashiach of Ahlul Sunnah has advised the people to stop talking about one another, to leave off the things that cause fitna, but yet you still find individuals in these private gatherings and groups, they're talking about the honor of their brothers after the Mashiach has advised to leave off this affair. This is transgression of the boundaries. And even people attributing to people that which never took place in Hakim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, مَنْ قَالَ فِي مُؤْمِنْ مَا لَيْسَ فِي أَسْكَنَهُ اللَّهُ رَضْغَةَ الْخَبَالِ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. That whoever says about the believer or about a believer that which is not in him, then Allah Azza wa Jal will cause that person to live in the pus of the people of the hellfire حَتَّى يَخْرُجْ مِنْ مَقَالِ Until he leaves of that which he has said. Does a person need any more threat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this to stop speaking about one's brothers and sisters, especially with that which they have not done, that which is not established or verified. We need to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not say that which you have no knowledge of. Because the people on the day of judgment will be questioned about their sight, about their speech, about their hearing, about what they believe, about their actions. We're going to be questioned about these things on your Mokayama. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, Fear Allah, wherever you may be. Follow up the bad deed with the good one, it will wipe it out. And behave with creation or the people with good behavior. Do not transgress the boundaries against the people, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims. Adhere to the advices of the ulama. When they advise us of how we should be dealing with one another as Muslims and how they advise us to deal with the non-Muslims, especially for those of us who are living in the land of the non-Muslims. Be aware of the people of innovation. From the Khawarij, those who violate the blood and the property and the honor of the Muslims as well as the non-Muslims. And be aware of the people who call the people to do other than that which the ulama has directed the people to do. The ulama are the inheritors of the Prophet. How can one leave off the inheritors of the Prophet for those who are ignorant? These individuals from the Khawarish, they are ignorant, but they're calling the people away from the scholars. And be aware of those who say they are with the scholars, but they oppose the advice of the scholars secretly. Be aware of that. Allah knows. And Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jalla is a watcher over you. Don't think because if you have a private group or private setting and you say things that goes against what the scholars have advised that no one is going to. Allah knows. Allah knows. Even if the people outside of that gathering don't know, Allah knows. And Allah will call you to account for that. Fear Allah. Fear Allah in public and fear Allah in private. Because perhaps Allah may not have patience with this type of transgression of the boundaries and then expose you. And then now that's another affair. We have to rectify ourselves, as Umar ibn Khattab he would say, and I end with this: "Hasibu an fusakum qabla an tuhasabu." Take account of yourselves 
before you were taking account of. I mean, take account of yourselves while you're in this dunya before you were taking account of Allah and the hereafter and there's no actions you can do. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that which has been mentioned here a source of benefit for myself and for you all. And I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive me for any shortcomings or slips of the tongue or mispronunciation of the speech of the ulama and before that of his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for perfection is with Allah alone. And I pray, sincerely pray and hope that this advice can bring some type of rectification for ourselves, adhering to what Allah has said, adhering to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam statements, adhering to the advices of the scholars past and present. Wa subhanaka Allahum wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Jazakum Allah khairan.